The second coming. Another load of crap. Greatest hits. Lamont and Tonelli make number two. These are the names we rejected for their new CD. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready as Lamont and Tonelli take you to the cleaners. So drop your pants and jack it off. Hey, I kind of like that. Lamont and Tonelli's Drop Your Pants and Jack It Off. Relax. It's only a CD. Enjoy it on the can. I mean, while you can. <laughs> no, 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 Sully. If you're going to drop your pants and jack it off, yeah. wait till you get to the dry cleaners. <laughs> oh, man. Hi, everyone. Lamont and Tonelli here. I just want to say I hope you enjoy this year's CD, and I hope you have as much fun listening to it as we had cashing your checks. You know what, Lamont? Yes. What's that, Sully? Let's kick off this CD with one of my favorites. You know what? Uh-huh. Uh, something to do with cheap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can tell it's one of your favorites. <laughs> Dirty deeds done with cheap. <laughs> you gotta do Get out the barn Stay off the farm Go read a nursery rhyme Don't ring 976 B-A-A-A That kind of love's a crime Hey Dirty deeds Done with sheep Dirty deeds Little bald feet Dirty deeds Done with sheep Dirty deeds and they're done with sheep Dirty deeds and they're done with sheep My friend Larry has a little lamb Her fleece is wet as snow He keeps bragging about a night and day Someone should tell him no Look at the flock, they're all in shock Velcro gloves, knee pads, late night dates, gun with shit, warning signs, electric fences, <laughs> high voltage, gun with shit, dirty beats. Don't tell them what I've done to you, gun with shit. Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey. Stand by for news. I was in San Francisco for some speaking engagements, and during a visit, Greg Jarrett mentioned that Bill Dulce, the dashing young drifter in skin-tight jeans, the gentle outlaw, owns the airport just 75 miles east across the Delta. With a glance to be sure Angel is out of earshot, I said, let's go. It was plenty of fun at first, the new man in town, the passion, the possibilities. He doesn't drink much, and neither do I. But before dinner, each of us had three martinis. During dinner, just to celebrate, we split a bottle of champagne. After dinner, we had four brandies. (laughs) In my initial position, both hands would be clasped across my chest with arms extended, back arched, knees bent. My knuckles are white as I grip the sills of the open door. That's the last solid contact with reality. With the cameraman alongside, any possibility of keeping this boyish adventure an in-house secret is now very unlikely. I'm shouting aloud now, wordless words from initial terror is emerging overwhelming delight. Dare I suggest an almost orgiastic climax? (laughs) Oh, oh, oh. Now, wait a minute. Quack, 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 quack. All right. On a grassy flat less than 50 yards from the airport hangar. And it was then staggering to my feet. And wishing I could come up with some profound remark. 
Instead, in my exhilaration, I'm reduced to gibberish. I'm helpless to proclaim anything more profound than, Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! I've long since made friends with this man. But we had never made love before. Paul Harvey. Good day. One of the most popular features on our show is when we dick with people on Dirty Friday. Here's what happens when Ernesto tries to dick with his future mother-in-law the day before his wedding. And after listening to this, how do you show your face at the upcoming wedding that weekend? I don't know. (laughs) And neither did Ernesto or Jamie, his mother-in-law. Hello? Good morning. Is uh, Suzanne, please? No, she isn't. Can I take a message? Uh, Now, who am I talking to? Uh, This is her mother, Jamie. Um, yes, um, I'm Officer, uh, Kumstein calling from the, uh, County Sheriff's Department, and I'm calling in regards to Ernesto. Okay, um... Do, do you know, do you know this man? Yes, he's my daughter's fiancé. They're getting married tomorrow. Is there something I can help you with? Well, there sure is. We have Ernesto in custody down here at the, uh, the Sheriff's Department. And we were told to call Suzanne this morning. Ernesto told us to call. You have Ernesto in custody. Yes, we um, do. Well, what happened? Ernesto and a couple of his buddies tried knocking off a uh, liquor store in San Mateo. What? What? Ernesto tried to knock off a liquor store? Yes, and uh, we have him on film. We have, uh, we have the uh, evidence. And it looks like he's going to be locked away for quite some time. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You know, I warned her. I warned her not to get mixed up with that kind of person. That that kind of person? Well, you know, I warned her not to get involved with a Mexican. I can't believe this. You did, did you? I did, yes. Yes, several times. But I, well, I didn't really suspect him. But, you know, you know how those people are. No, no, I don't, Jamie. Uh, Jamie, this is Lamont and Tonelli calling from 92.3 KSJO. You're on the air. It's Dirty Friday. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're kidding. Your daughter set you up for this. Um... Here's another heartfelt message from one of our fine sponsors. Hello there. My name is Eaton Ass III, resident of Dingleberry Breweries. My friends call me Dookie. I'm here to tell you about our brand new brown ale number two. Our brew comes from the dingleberries deep within the bowels of Cornhole, Montana, and is the pause that refreshes. But don't take it from me. Talk to some of our satisfied dingleberry customers like Red Sphincter. This brown nut ale is all that it's cracked up to be. Or Anita Pokin of Hershey Squirts, Pennsylvania, who says that It's affordably priced, so I didn't have to drop a load on it. We stacked our beer up against the competition and wrecked them. Find out why. Pull up a stool and put your lips on a can today. Don't let the first sip or the distinct aroma leave you deterred. No, ifs, ands, or buts about it. Sometimes it takes a bit to get used to the tart taste of a dingleberry brew. This stuff tastes like sh- But I assure you, nothing tastes quite like a dingleberry. Dingleberry Breweries, distributed by BM Exporters, Brown Trout, Tennessee. I've got the crud that's going around the station, too. Yeah, you really yeah. got something, and you've been uh, all drugged up all morning long trying to get rid of that crap. Yeah, hopefully it'll be uh, gone by Day of the Green, which is uh, coming up this Sunday. Seven great bands, including Sammy Hagar, our main man, who we have on the phone with us right now. Sammy! You bunch of pussies in this place <laughs> right now. Oh, the what have you? Oh, what I'm what? telling you guys, you can't, you can't come to the party, man. It's like, are you going to make it to this one, huh? I of course we're going to be there. The come on, what about the Concord show? Both you guys, you don't show. I, I had it all set up. I had places for you up on my stage. I had a bottle of tequila for you. We were going to get liquored up. And what happened? They say, oh, no, the uh, Lamont Tenali were on vacation. <laughs> they have pussies. They sent Silly over instead. <laughs> Silly was there or something. Yeah, I know. We sent Sully to that show. <laughs> so the reason we were on vacation, but I've got to tell you, I'm looking forward to seeing you at Day on the Green this coming up Sunday. Hey, you can redeem yourself. You okay. know what I mean? It's like the fans. There were people out there. They were chanting for you guys, man. They were. They were. I don't know how the chant was going. I can't remember if it was like. 
Lamont Tonelli, Lamont Tonelli. It was Tonelli Lamont. You know, or, you know <laughs> it was kind of hard to do. The chant didn't work. It wasn't like Sammy. Sammy you know they I mean? they should have just been yelling pussy. <laughs> yeah, pussy. That's right. There you go. This time, that's what they're going to be yelling. Oh, oh don't, don't, don't get them yelling pussy when we're up there. <laughs> Hell, man, I, I'll go for that. The, the, <laughs> now, the only thing is, and I, I, told, I told you last time, I'm allergic to tequila. If I have tequila, I may just end up doing something goofy on stage. That's part of it, I'm telling you. That's half the deal. I mean, that's uh, need I say any more? Now, here, here's the whole deal, though. Right. I'm telling you, we're gonna ha- we're gonna do the whole nine yards. You know, with all all the stage thing. You guys got to be up there this time. Oh, okay. we'll be up there. You know, I got to see you guys hurt yourself. And I'm promising the listeners that the next day. You guys are going to be worthless. Well, you're, you're we're worthless, worthless every day. Every morning, but that Monday morning, October the 11th, you're going to be totally shot. Okay, now we're, I'm going to show up, and we're going to drink with you on stage. Oh, you got to do it. You guys got to do it. I don't want you getting any pussy chant going while we're up there. Well, you know what? If that starts happening, man, it could be good because when they start throwing pussy at you when you're on stage, that's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> start, start the chant. I'm down with that chant. I'm down with that chant. I'm like, man, I, I'm going to... I'm, a, I'm actually going to be the ringleader for that. <laughs> All right, Sammy, we'll, we will I see you. I just hope some shows up. You know uh, what I'm we, saying? We will see you day we'll on the green. We'll definitely be there. I'm looking forward to seeing you there this Sunday. <laughs> oh, no. You know, one artist I feel sorry for is Ricky Martin. Ricky Martin, why do you feel so sorry for him? He's on top of the world. Well, good-looking guy, mm-hmm. makes it big. What's the first thing the National Enquirer and all the rags write about him? Oh, yeah. He's gay. Of That's course. what they say. When is he going to come out of the closet? In fact, there are even some betting agencies that are laying odds that he'll come out of the closet sometime before the end of 1999. So that's why we wrote the song, I Don't Eat Pinocha. It's Ricky Martin. No, Enrique Martin. <laughs> that's why we wrote it. <laughs> They wrote, I don't like women, I like chicks with balls Bent over is my position, pumping in the bathroom stall I'm into masturbation, nipple clamps and candle wax Gotta have fornication with big old hairy sacks I'll make you take your clothes off and pull out the Vaseline My days in the nude are turning into a big queen A woman closet queen I like trousers, trousers I don't like Pinocha Going up the chute I don't eat Pinocha I play the skin flute to hell with Pinocha Give me that big fruit I don't like Pinocha I won't eat Pinocha I won't eat Pinocha Do you suffer from anal leakage? Yes, I do. Then you know that anal leakage is uncomfortable, inconvenient, and embarrassing. It sure is. And while people may joke about it, anal leakage is no laughing matter. No, it's a very real problem. And yet, people still laugh. Excuse me? And who can blame them? Uh, Anal leakage just sounds funny. Anal leakage. Go on, say it with me. Anal leakage. I'd rather not. I bet you're experiencing anal leakage even as we speak. No, I'm not. Hey, everyone, this guy's got anal leakage. I do (laughs) not. I mean, not at the moment. Come on, everyone, repeat after me. You've got anal leakage. You've got got anal leakage. leakage. Shut up. Just shut up. Remember, anal leakage is a laughing matter. So if you're seeping, keep it to yourself. You know, one of the best things we've done in the past year or so, we get so many calls for this feature. We actually took an irate call. (laughs) It was a return call, to tell you the truth, from Stuntmaster Evil Knievel. And then we chopped it up, put it on our computer, and started making computer-generated calls to people. And people thought they were actually getting a phone call from Evil Knievel. Here's one of our favorites. Yes, hello, 7-Eleven, may I Hello? 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 Hello, 7-Eleven. Who am I speaking with? Who is, this is Benji Patel. Who am I speaking to? It's none of your business. I said, who am I speaking with? Why are you calling me? I'm not calling you. You're calling me. This is yeah, I got a caller ID here. Who called this number? Well, this is... I did not call you, mister. Don't get forced with me, okay? I, I am not the one who called here. Who am I speaking with? 
This is Benji Patel, sir. Who are you calling me? It's none of your business. I said, who am I speaking with? Why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? I am not calling you. You are calling me. Yeah, I got a caller ID here. Who I called this care. number? I don't care. You can have my number, 7-Eleven. This is evil, Knievel, and if I ever see you, you mother I'll whip your head off. Hey, you listen to me. Listen to me, you son of a bitch. I am the one who is sitting here waiting and working very hard, and you're calling me and giving me a hard time. Who am I speaking with? This is Benji Patel, I'm telling you. I won't tell you no more again. Yeah, I got a caller ID here. Who called this number? I don't care. I am not calling you. You're calling me. If I, this is evil, Knievel, and if I ever see you, you mother I'll whip your head off. Listen, don't call me evil. Don't you do that to me, you son of invention. You don't say that to me. I am working Stop hard. Stop calling me on the phone. I'm not calling you on the phone. You're calling me. <laughs> Well, we hope you're enjoying this year's edition of the Best of Lamont and Tonelli. And you know, Lamont, uh -huh. there is something you promised me you haven't done yet. Oh, I'm, I'm almost afraid to ask. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting that KY jelly out yet. I never promised you that. Where's my girlfriend, Shirley Q. Laker? <laughs> Here she is. You've got her on the Best of Lamont and Tonelli. Okay, you guys go have a romantic moment together. <laughs> Get out of here, Sully. <laughs> Leave my leg alone. <laughs> Girl, look, I'm sitting up here trying to get these kids to school and they are running late again because this morning my 13-year-old, the flick one, honey, she went into labor. I heard her all night long with that damn hollering, that damn cattle just hollering in labor. Couldn't get no kind of sleep. And she had that baby not an hour ago right here in the kitchen, honey, because I was sitting here cooking breakfast and she came and squat down and had that thing and named it a placentia velcro. And get this, now she gonna have the nerve to try to stay home from school today. I told her, ah, uh -uh, baby, no, no. See, childbirth is a natural thing, not a illness. And then she need to get her wig on and get on that school bus. Tell your mom and them I ask them how she doing. Bye, baby. You know, one of my favorite calls is the one we made from the uh, 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 the last look. <laughs> this. You know, one of my favorite calls is one that we made just recently that we made to Gail. I can't read your fucking writing. It was a call we made to Gail, whose mother set her up on a dirty Friday. Oh, yeah, I remember that one. It seems uh -huh. that her daughter really wanted a job badly. Oh, you betcha. And we called up with some very, very hideous news for and, her. And uh, an idea of another kind of job. <laughs> What I love, I love families that that kick a person when they're down. Now, oh, man, your old mom called up, and nobody can kick you said, like a family member. I want you to sting my daughter this morning. Her name is Gail. So Gail's mom is trying to sting her on Dirty Friday. Yeah, it says Gail's been unemployed for a while. Yeah, she uh, she has a chance to get a a, a really good job. I guess she's uh, been to a few uh, job interviews. They sent her for the uh, the uh, tests that they do. For the company. The, apparently, the company that's hiring her has drug tests. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. And Gail thinks she has this job. She's hyped. She's excited. And it pays some pretty big bucks, too. Looking forward to finally uh, being among the ranks of the employed here yep. in the Bay Area. So, uh, we're going to have fun with her this morning. All right, calling uh, Gail here. On Dirty Friday. Uh -huh. So, actually, filling a couple of themes here on Dirty Friday. Kicking uh, somebody when they're down and yeah. always stinging the ones you love. Absolutely. Gail's mom here is setting her up. Hello. Good morning. Is uh, Gail, please? This is Gail. Hi, Gail. How are you? I'm calling. Uh, this is uh, Michael uh, Rogers calling from the uh, Oh, hi. And I'm calling uh, in reference to the um, the test that you uh, you came in to complete earlier on uh, this month. Right, right for the job. Yeah, Gail. I'm very disturbed by the results here. What What do you mean? And what I'll be forwarding these into uh, to the company. What What's wrong with the results? Well, the results that we've uh, we've come up with indicate um, a very very high drug use. What? You You completely got my test results mixed up with someone else's. I don't do drugs. Now, I Gail, don't do drugs. There's been a mistake. Gail, Gail, we've you know you can sing the same old sob story that we I've heard from a number it's of other people who failed these don't drug do tests. Drugs. There's been a mistake. They're 100 percent accurate, and we will be forwarding this to the company. 
You, now, you by don't law, understand. You have to have the wrong results. I don't do drugs. I am completely clean. By, by law, Gail, I have to uh, call you to inform you this, you and that's basically the I only thing I... Can I take them or something? Because you're wrong. Uh, I mean, I'm not saying I have never touched drugs in my life, but it has been more than, than six months. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, re- no, now, you see, Gail, just by telling me that, you automatically fail the test. No, no... I mean, you know, every kid experiments. So that was a long time ago. You can't, you can't blame me for something that happened a long time ago. Well, you ma- have to have the wrong no, results. No, no, look, have, ma'am. Or let me retake them. I'll retake no, them. No, you cannot retake them. Uh, the company only hires us for the one test. It's up to it's I'll the company's. I'll do anything. Pr- I need this job. I Excuse need this job. I have, I have been unemployed for six months now. This is a really good job. I will retake it. I will pass. If you deny me this, I'm going to lose this job. I'll do. What, what do I need to do? Well, I'll, I'll go down there. Do you want me to go down there in person? Well, you see, Gail, it doesn't really matter because they they employ us to do one test, and we've got the results, and we just hand those over to but, the company. But you could do another but, test. You could do this for me. No, Gail. Uh, uh, is there anything, anything I can do that you'll well, you'll you'll give me another test? Like what? What what are you referring to? What what do you want? What do you mean? Anything I can do? Or, I don't know. Um. Are you married? I could take you out to lunch or something, or, or you know, any or or what? Anything. I'll do anything to get this retaken. Anything, you you know, if you we could go out and you know maybe maybe have a couple drinks or something. You know, I could. Um, I'll, I'll do anything. I'll do anything. You want me to? to do you want? To, I'll sleep with you. I'll do anything you want. Well. uh... Gail, you want to meet me somewhere? Ga- we could get a motel. Ga- Gail, what, I, what I'll tell you is, uh, your mother called us this morning. This is Lamont Antonelli from oh KSJ. My- uh, oh, boy. <laughs> Hi, Mom! <laughs> Stung what- your daughter! I wonder what kind of job she was applying for. I'm f- but I'm sh- I'm d- but I'm really f- I'm f- in my a- Oh yeah! My c- is full of j- My t- are all smeared with c- My sh- is a m- f- baby! And what it all comes down to Is that everything's really just f- 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 Cause I've got one hand <laughs> Hello, Americans. This is Paul Harvey. Stand by for news on Cullendon Lane, Jacksonville, Florida. Chuck Buick finally gave up. Chuck enjoys marijuana, so he decided to accept Paul Harvey's suggestion. He gave up. He went to the phone. He called me. He ordered a bong. Bong, that's a pipe used to smoke marijuana. I want you to hear this carefully because you're thinking about a Valentine's Day present for somebody you love very much. Quote, my marijuana bong arrived Saturday and after I opened the box I was in shock. My eyes were locked open wide. My whole house was now a concert hall. I went to the washroom and even from there it sounded like a real live lady singing right outside the door. (laughs) Quote, with heat eating your ears, you're gouging out and tearing loose and pulling apart, gulping air and tasting black. Your windpipe is closing and you've lost track of which way is out. There's a searing ember down your neck. Search, rescue, ventilate. Somebody's singed a kitten. (laughs) Quote, I'm listening to all of my old CDs again because I have never really heard them before. Now, for that Valentine's Day gift, it's not too early for you to choose a bong. If you're anything but happy with it, I'll buy it back. To locate your nearest dealer, telephone (laughs) 1-800-BONG. Paul, I've got a question for All you. All right, I'm ready. Have you ever seen a really hairy beaver? Mm, let me think. I haven't seen the most recent issue of Field and Stream magazine. <laughs> well, then you didn't see the naked pictures of Dr. Laura this past year on the internet. You know, it got us thinking after we saw that. She could make some pretty big money with some endorsements. <laughs> you know, think of Mick Jagger's mouth surrounded by Don King's hairdo. <laughs> Ladies, are you troubled by unwanted body hair? Well, now there's help with the Dr. Laura Shaver. 
Dr. Laura cleans up the toughest jobs. Those hard to reach spots are no problem. So if you've got a Dr. Laura sized hair problem. I looked like I had buckwheat in a headlock down there until I got the Dr. Laura shaver. Then get the Dr. Laura shaver. Also try the Dr. Laura lawn mulcher and weed whacker. As well as many of the other fine Dr. Laura lawn care products at your local hardware store. Paul, every single day we come into the KSGO studios and we try our damnedest to make everyone's life just a little easier. And that's what we do on Do You a Favor Thursday, where we often say we'll bend over backwards to make your dream come true. Especially the morning that Joe called up after he was caught cheating by his wife. And, well, (laughs) he wanted her back. It was a tough job, but damn it, we had to do it for him. <laughs> oh, Joe was a pussy. <laughs> we have Joe on the line. Joe, you still with us? Yeah. All right. You, um, and just to review this, to make, I make sure I know exactly what I'm getting into before I call your, uh, your wife, Monique. Your wife, Monique, caught you cheating on her with a gal at work. You had been seeing this gal for about five months, and you're... Your wife discovered this when someone from work called her and tipped her off. Is that correct? Yes. You um, you now realize this is the worst mistake you've ever made in your life. Mm-hmm. Monique wants nothing, absolutely nothing to do with you. Is that correct? Yeah. You've tried calling her. You've tried talking to her. You've tried telling her you love her. She wants nothing to do with you. Yep. You have two children? Yeah. You've been married for five years. Yeah. You threw all that away by getting your paycheck and pussy in the same place. <laughs> I'm just making sure I, I know exactly what happened here, Joe. I guess if you want to put it that way, yeah. Okay. Let's uh let's call your wife up here and I'm gonna try and help you. Are you gonna apologize to her? I just need to talk to her. Okay. Let's give her a call. Okay. Okay. There we go. Hopefully we get in touch with her here. Hello. Good morning. I'm looking for Monique, please. This is Monique. Hi, Monique. How you doing? Lamont and Super Producer Sully on the air here. Lamont and Ellie Show. Can we get you on the air? We've got something very, very special for you this morning. This is your lucky day. Sure. Okay, great. How you doing today? Okay. Good. Just getting ready to go to work? Yeah. Wonderful. And now listen, Monique. Yeah. Um, I understand things haven't been too great for you lately. What are you talking about? Um, I know the situation between you and your husband, Joe. We've got Joe on the line with us. Joe, say hi to Monique. Hi, Monique. Hey. I'm so sorry about what happened. What's wrong with you with your voice? <laughs> Joe is very, very... Joe, can, can you contain yourself here? Just give me a minute. Oh, get out of here. Monique? Yeah. Joe Joe called us up and told us exactly what happened between him and the gal from work. Why'd you do that, Joe? Uh, man. And how you caught them? I realized how much of a mistake I made, and I, there's nothing that I can do to take it back, but you just need to give me another chance, please. please. Aren't you embarrassed? Aren't you embarrassed to, to call call them and say all this? It was the only way I could get through to you. You would not answer my phone call. You are such a gutter pig. You really are. This is disgusting. You you disgust me. Monique, Monique. Yeah. You you were married to this man for five years. Is that correct? <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Come on, Joe. Like, you, does the word trust mean anything to you? Like, you didn't deserve all this. You asked for it. Why don't you think with your head next time? Joe, you all right? <laughs> Good, go ahead and cry. Who cares? I'm sorry. Monique, Monique, you're married to this man for five years. You have two children with him. Do you not think that maybe you can just listen to what he has to say here? What, what's he going to say? I turn my back. He screws around with some young little tramp at work. It, you know, it's a matter of trust. Right, we do. He's the one who should have thought of the two kids and me before he ran off with this bimbo. It's not... Listen, I can't take it back, Mo. I know I can't take it back, but if you just give me another chance, I'll earn your trust again. I promise. I'm yeah, so I'm, sorry. Joe, I'm moving on. You know, I don't need a, a pig Please like you. Please don't leave sorry. me. You know, I feel sorry. You know what? I feel sorry for you. Please but... don't leave me. No. Monique? Yeah? He wants another chance. 
have you find a chance with a bimbo. Can you find it in your heart to maybe... I don't want the bimbo. I want you. Well, you'll find another. You'll find somebody else. I'll find somebody else. You'll find somebody else. There's no way I'm taking Why you are you being so cold? Hey, you asked for it. Am I the one who cheated with somebody from work? <laughs> I mean, I met this girl, I looked, you know, I, I was at parties with her, and everybody's laughing at me. I doubt it. I, you know, no way. You're a pig. You disgust me. I hate you. You know, I, I feel sorry for our children, and that's who you should, you should really be talking to our children, because how do they feel now? You're a pig. <laughs> You're just a pig. You know, Monique, are you there? Joe? <laughs> Joe, are you all right? I made such a stupid mistake. Joe? <laughs> Joe, she hung up. <laughs> Joe, just control yourself, all right? She she hung up. I think... Um, I think if, if you want her back, you might have to give it a little time. Yeah, maybe that's a good idea. Because I, I don't think... It's not looking good, Joe. I need some water or something. I... Joe, just just hold on the line. Try and control yourself, okay? And we'll try and help you out here, okay? Uh -uh. All right. Oh, Joe was a pussy. <laughs> and now, a Lamont and Tonelli tribute to a young lady who could have used a good dry cleaner. There was no sexual relationship between me and Monica Lewinsky, which was true. I've made a big mess, my goop is on the dress, the stain. On her knee she went down, then she got home and found the stain. Kneeling Bob as she slobbed on my knob, the stain. Here we go! Seaman on a blue dress, blue dress, blue dress, seaman on a blue dress. Wow! Seaman on a blue dress, blue dress, blue dress, seaman on a blue dress. Till you had to take a big shot, didn't you? And it missed Monica's mouth. You had to take a big shot. No, she didn't stop. Get it up. Monica's behind. I could get it up. Monica really blew my mind. My, 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 I, I. Woo! My, 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 my scrotum. Well, cause he turned her white house into a love shack. He's got an excuse, and I don't think it's funny for what he did with that Monica Honey. Well, the love stain is a little old place where he left DNA. Love stain, baby. Love stain, baby. Monica told him not to come. Monica told him not to come. She said, now my new dress got your scum Written oh, oh, on her dress Oh, it made such a mess At this moment, he's real sorry Monica's dress Bill had to confess It's so dirty Come on her dress Wanted to screw her, but she had a cramp I got down on my knees you did. And I flashed him both of these Monica <laughs> Then he said he loved me And I ate it up It's just an expression They say I'm a disgrace My whole life is Melrose Place But at last I can show my maturity In my book that some guy wrote for me I wear the thongs that tingled Kenneth Star. Who knew I'd end up puffing Willie's cigar? Now Barbara Walters knows what hummers are. Monica takes us into this intimate territory. Oh my god, like that and phone sex. A lot of people don't know what phone sex is. Right, Barbara. I wear the thongs that made old Bill Sportwood. He never screwed me 
but he screwed me good I stained the dress that made my mother cry Someday I'm gonna have to tell my kids if I ever go through a whole pregnancy Mommy made a big mistake just like her mommy I am clueless and I wear the thong Monica, describe yourself I'm, um, I'm intelligent, I'm attractive, I'm loving, I'm slutty, um, I've got huge hips. <laughs> I've got more cushion for the push. By now, you probably want your money back, don't you? We continue with Lamont and Tonelli's Drop Your Pants and Jack It Off. Hello? Yeah, I got a caller ID here. Who called this number? Who is this? It's none of your business. I said, who am I speaking with? Why are you calling me? Hey, blow it out your ass, prick. If, this is evil Knievel, and if I ever see you, you mother I'll rip your head off. Yeah, I bet you will. Who am I speaking with? None of your fucking business, you piece of shit. <laughs> Sully? Wow, we like that guy. Save that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just don't even waste a moment. No. Just okay. put that on the best of CD okay. this year, and we're putting that on unbeeped. I don't want any beeps in that okay. one, okay? Just an unbeeped version. We like that guy. <laughs> One of the biggest entertainment spectaculars from this past year wasn't Sully's home video collection. <laughs> it was the release of Star Wars. Oh, The Phantom Menace. And I thought it was pretty interesting the way they included Samuel L. Jackson in that movie. Now, do you think he was typecast after Pulp Fiction? He's a black dude, isn't he? <laughs> yes, he is, Sully. <laughs> yes, he is, Sully. And I think George Lucas had a little problem writing him into the script. And now, a scene from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, with Samuel L. Jackson. Oh dear, what are we doing in this horrible place? You know why we're here? I don't remember asking you a damn thing. What country are you from? There ain't no country I ever heard of. Oh, shut up, Artu, you're making him angry. English, do you speak it? Oh yes, I speak English. I'm fluent in over 14 million forms of communication. I don't remember asking you a thing. What? English, do you speak it? What? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you, mother Say what one more goddamn time. Oh, what, what, what? What are you going to do? Oh, you were finished. What? Oh, well, allow me to retort. Oh, oh, oh my. Oh, dear. Oh, come on, Arthur. Oh, 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 my God. We're done for. We're history. Oh, come on. Let's go. Let's go, Arthur. Let's go, Arthur. Oh, don't like that man at all. You've been listening to a scene from Star Wars featuring Samuel L. Jackson. Uh, howdy, folks. This is Bob Dole, and I'm here to speak to you about ED. Oh, not Elizabeth Dole, but erectile dysfunction. Although some people say they're, they're the same thing. <laughs> but anyway, at first I was hesitant to talk to you about my inability to sport wood. You know, uh, get it chubby, pitch a tent. Hell, when Elizabeth and I'd get together, she'd complain it was like shooting pool with a rope. But then the good folks at Pfizer invented Viagra, and now she's chalking up my cue, if you know what I mean. Hell, my new nickname is Pink Steel. I'm the, I'm the main vein. Elizabeth calls me her uh, erected official. No longer will I have to put up with people pointing to me and Elizabeth going, there's clam and limp weenie. If you're having problems putting a little lead in your pencil, Talk to a professional, hopefully one with big tits, and take it from Bob Dole. It's about time you had a stiffy. Now if they could only come up with a pill from a right arm here. Brought to you by the makers of Viagra and Muttgab, men unable to get a boner. We always have fun on our show, and we know we can pick on foreigners. I know how that is. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, it started with Sully a number of years ago and progressed into some other Dirty Friday calls with people who were visiting from outside the country. Well, here's a son who wanted to sting his father, and man, the father went cuckoo. <laughs> his dad couldn't believe it when we told him his son was munching on some Italian sausage. <laughs> Mario wants to sting his father, Tony. Okay, we can do that. And Always stinging the ones you love on Dirty Friday. And the thing is, yeah. Father's Day is this Sunday. Maybe this is Tony's way of... Well, there uh, you go. Or Happy Mario's way of uh, stinging his dad, Tony. Happy Father's Day. You betcha. And uh, the way he wants to do it, he said his dad is from the old country. Mm -hmm. And uh, is visiting him. Uh, well, I guess he's, he's living uh, back east now, but he's uh, visiting him here. And he says he's, uh, he's a tried and true Italian. Well, good for him. Yeah, 100% right. Italian. Nice to see the old guys... Uh, Still uh, around. 
100% thoroughbred, kind of like the Tonelli family. Well, for the most part. And <laughs> bloodlines and, have been getting watered down with each generation. <laughs> and he said, he and said, the 100%ers are going by the wayside. He said, what he wants to do this morning is uh, call his dad, wake him up, uh -huh. and he wants us to pretend that we're his lover. <laughs> Oh, Dear old my. dad, happy Father's Day. Screwing with go. dad in advance of Father's Day. Here we go. Uh, let me see. Now, this may not go over too well if uh, if he's right off the boat kind of a guy. Yeah. But you said he's been living back east most recently. Yeah. I've got to ask for the son. He's at work already. Okay, here we go. Hello? Hello, hello? With, hello with Mario there, please. Uh, no, Mario's not here. He's uh, he went. He wants. We went to work. He went. Uh, who this? Oh, uh, this is the father, I'm Tony. Well, hi, Tony. How are you this morning? Oh, I'm fine. Hi, uh, I'm. I'm just. Uh, I can't wait to meet you. I've heard so much about you. You heard so much about me. My you... son, he talked about me. Yeah. You're. You're. Th yes. Uh, what did he say? What did he say about me? He said you're a great guy. My name's Christopher, and I'm. Uh, I'm, uh, well, geez, I've heard so much about you. I can't wait to meet you and your big Italian thoughts. Oh. I, 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 I met you, I, I, I met your son a couple, uh, months and a, I guess three months ago. Yeah. And he's a very special friend of mine. All right, he's a good friend of yours. Oh, a very special friend. Oh, good. Well, I'd like to meet my son's a special friend someday, you know? Well, that, that's very, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just kind of curious. Maybe you can come over to our, my place and we'll have dinner and... And and we'll talk, and I'll show you some pictures of me and your son. And oh, oh, sure, that, why not? That would be beautiful. Because I I've been seeing him for probably like three and a half months. I'm his I'm his I'm his lover. Oh, you 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 his you his what? You his what? I'm Mario's lover. My 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 son. My my son is he's a man. That's my son. Mario. Yeah, yes, Tony. I know. You say that you my 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 son's lover. Yes, sir. No, it can't be. There's some kind of mistake. What's your name again? M my, my name is Christopher. Christopher. Christopher, I think you got the wrong Mario. You know, uh, no, Mario I'm think he's got a girlfriend. No, no I, I, I am Mario's girlfriend. You're Mario's girlfriend? Yes, sir. I, I, I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. Wait, my, my son is, uh, is, is a Lycone? I don't think so. You son of what? My, my son is a Rikyon, or how you say, a faggot? Well, I don't appreciate that language, Tony. Let me tell you something. Your son and I have something very special. You and my son don't got nothing, my friend. Now, you keep away from my son. Well, why would I keep away from him? Because he's a man. And you're not a man. And you're we're, a Rikyon. And we're lovers. No, you're not. No, we're my... <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I don't know what he was saying to me in Italian. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, you know, I've heard the word. Well, I've heard the word Finocchio before, but uh, I don't know what he was talking about. But when he, I don't understand Italian, but I understand that one word in English. So the Italian father goes nuts when he finds out his son is gay. How did your dad handle it? Hey, easy. <laughs> 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 well, we had to call the father back, and here's what happened. Hello? Hello? Uh, hello? Is, is, is this Antonio? Yes, this is Tony. Listen, what? Antonio, this is Christopher calling back. Christopher? Cr Christopher? Christopher who? Christopher? L L I'm, I'm Mario's lover. Listen, didn't I tell you not to call back? I don't want you to stay with my son. Listen, now, Antonio, listen, the reason I'm calling back is I just can't understand how you could be so close-minded. What do you mean a close-minded? You're supposed to go after the women, you know? You're a man. He's a man. That's no right. Now, now, Tony, I don't know how I'm going to marry into the family with that attitude. Listen, what do you mean married? You can't marry my son. We were planning on getting married. No, 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 no. Listen, there's something wrong with you. You can't marry my son. You understand? We love each other. No, 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 no. Keep away from my son, okay? That's why 
No, not dirty, young man. Dirty Friday. You're on the air. I'm on the air. Listen. I'm on Google. <laughs> what the hell does that mean, Paul? <laughs> you don't want to know what that one means. <laughs> well, honey, I finally went and saw my doctor. It was time for my yearly physicals. Ooh, I hate taking my clothes off in front of men, folks, honey. I done gained so much weight that nurse came in there and put me in one of them gowns, honey. Felt like I was wearing a bib. I was so embarrassed. And the doctor finally come in there. He said, you been drinking more than usual? And I said, no, I just drank till I passed out. How about you? He said, well, you keep on. You're going to get roaches and liver. He said, your blood is high now. I said, my blood is high. What you expected? Honest to goodness, I'm over here trying to raise 19 children. Have you ever thought what that might be like? My gynecologist say he do not know how I managed to do it and survive. He say my insides should have fell out by now, and honey. If it wasn't from all them nerve pills I be taking, they sure enough would have. Shoot. Tell your mama now my ex how she doing. Bye, baby. You know, if there's one thing that's a staple on the Lamont and Tonelli program is the fact that we love <laughs> fart jokes. <laughs> <laughs> and we love Frank Sinatra. Oh, so the two of them together is a deadly combination. And this is a touching old rendition of a classic by Old Blue Eyes. Oh, I thought his name was Old Brown Eyes. <laughs> <laughs> it was after you recorded this song. <laughs> Breaking wind and blowing wind, just smell me. It lingered there, that stale air, and stuck by me. Well, all night long, I blew a song, tooting like a four piece band. Those great big farts As I break wind I had that gas Sneak from my ass It went flying by I cracked a rat And it went splat Wish it was dry it smelled like ham, or rotten lamb, or maybe baby's poo. And I lost you to breaking wind. Well, I cut the cheese, and you did wheeze. I dropped a bomb. And still the days when I spray go on and on Gas from my thighs brought great big cries With silent but deadly farts Hey! Pull my finger friend Cause I'm breaking wind I'm breaking wind I'm breaking wind 